All right, so welcome to episode two of the Max Bloom versus the High Bay White LED grow lights. Uh, it's a couple days later now, and I just wanted to show you that the seeds for the cherry tomatoes have germinated, and that means that it is now time to take them off of the heat mat and put the black divider up between these lights and put light on them immediately and then we're going to put nutrient solution in the container and put the net cups down in the container. Um, it's very very important that when you're germinating seeds and if they're in the dark you want to make sure as soon as they sprout to put light on them right away and a lot of uh, enough light because if you don't do that the beginning stages of growth is uh, one of the most important when they, as soon as they emerge, what happens is uh, if you have too little light and they elongate and get tall, they get really lanky and weak and they end up falling over, they get stressed and you pretty much ruin everything. Right, so before we actually uh, close out the video with the end product, I just want to show you what we're actually using for this test. And I use the Flora Series from General Hydroponics. I use it for all my grows. Um, I really like it. I haven't had any problems with it at all. Uh, these are numbered on top here for a reason. These are the order you want to mix them in the solution. So you want to add this to your water first, mix it up, then add this one to your water second, mix it up, and then third, this one. Um, and this is what they are in order. Now, this one here is the Floor Micro for hard water. Uh, this if you have hard water, you're going to want to use this because you don't. You already have um, a lot of calcium in there. A lot of these Flora Grow series, uh, or actually, I should say, all of the Flora Grow series, these are designed to actually be used with RO water, so there's nothing in it. So that's why you need to buy the General Hydroponics Flora Micro for hard water if you're just using tap water, because uh, you already got a lot of minerals in there. For me, my water is not that hard, so I actually take this and mix it with this about half and half so there's a little bit more calcium in there and some other things but mainly calcium um, so we're gonna mix this up I'm probably gonna mix up about a six gallon batch in total and what I'm actually using is the back here I use it where it says general purpose mild vegetative I just do one 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 to keep it simple uh, and you can follow the other ones on here I haven't really found where it says aggressive vegetative growth you're doing three, two, one. I haven't really found a, a huge noticeable difference by giving it more of the flora grow. Um, maybe, I mean, yeah, maybe a little bit, but I haven't really seen to be, it, it hasn't really been worth it to me. Um, you can do transition to bloom, and as a matter of fact, you're gonna wanna do that when you do go to bloom, it increases your TDS of the nutrients in the water. Uh, however, when you go to blooming and ripening, you don't necessarily need to change your solution you don't need to go the one, two, three, yeah, what it says on here. Uh, you're going to get some benefit from it, but I find just going one, one, one for vegetative and going two, two, two for the flowering and fruiting. It works just fine that way. It makes things a lot easier, and when you go to replace these, you can, you're using each one of these up almost the same amount each time rather than having to buy just this or buy just this and buy just this. Um, you can just buy a whole kit and save some money. All right, so now I have filled up the container with uh, actually about four gallons of water. And that is almost enough to hit the bottom of this net pot. And you can see I got my air stones in there, so that's gonna cause some splashing um, onto the bottom of these. However, because it doesn't make it all the way down with the four gallons, it's almost there. Probably another gallon it'll touch the bottom. Um, so when you're using a net pot and you're putting your uh, little rock wool cube in there. Uh, you can have it sitting on the bottom and then just have a quarter inch of water. So almost, maybe almost up to that first little line you see, that, that tier. Uh, and that's all you want. But in my situation here, um, I'm not using the big, the big cubes that would fit in these five inch net pots. I'm only using these small ones. That's pretty small. Uh, but I got very big uh, lake of clay pebbles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the water come up enough 
by adding more water to it so that this will sit on top of the pebbles so that I'm not burying it underneath all those pebbles. So you don't want to have it down here and just pour everything on top. Obviously that's utter stupidity. But uh, anyways, that's what I'm going to do. And also a tip, um, anytime you buy something from the store, such as a container like this, you always want to make sure that you wash it out with soap and water before you put anything into it. Uh, you have to make sure that it's clean. You don't want any mold or bacteria growing inside there. You don't want any oils or residues in your solution or anything else that could be in there. And when I wash them, I normally use Dawn dish soap. Uh, it's safe to use for a lot of stuff. That's why I use it on animals when they clean them with, clean the oil off them from oil spills. So I'm gonna come back here, show you the video as we close out once everything is set up and complete now. All right, so I got both lights set up here with the black divider down the middle. Doesn't look pretty or anything, but uh, I just kind of just kind of threw it together for now. I'll fix it up later to make it look nicer. And the Max Bloom light, the recommendation from the manufacturer is having it set 40 inches from the plant at the seedling stage, and then uh, setting the brightness for the vegetative part of the light, this dimmer here, to 50%, which it is. So we're going to take a look at what the light output with my Hydrofarm power meter is. It's kind of hard to do with one hand here. Just going to take a quick look and see what that is. So we're at about 50, 50 micromole. Uh, that's not a whole lot. I don't know why they would have you set it at uh, that distance. The seedling, seedlings can handle a lot more than 50 micromole, but we're gonna go ahead and just do the recommendation. And we're gonna check the other light over here to make sure it's the same. It should be pretty close. All right, so this one's only reading 17, 18, and that's because this dimmer switch I have on here, um, it doesn't work right. Uh, I'll talk about that in another video, but right now what I'm just gonna let you know what I'm doing is I'm gonna make sure that this is reading the same simply by adjusting this light closer down. So that's it for episode two. We'll see you in episode three. Thanks for watching.